Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast. And today, we're going to talk about one of my most highly anticipated physical media releases basically ever. And that is... Solid Metal Nightmares, the films of Shinya Tsukamoto. Now this is an Arrow video release, and it is a Region A Blu-ray box set. This is the limited edition, I guess special edition, which also has a booklet in it. So we'll go through all of that. Right off the bat, I'm just going to tell you, Shinya Tsukamoto is my favorite director of all time. So this is a pretty big kind of a, a physical media release for me personally. Let's go through and talk about the films that are included in this box set right off the bat. And then we'll talk about various features and some thoughts on some of the films here. Now, right on the side there, you can see all the films that are included. I'm going to use my own list here that's sorted chronologically. So you get The Adventures of Denshu Kozo, also known as The Adventures of Electric Rod Boy, also known as The Great Analog World from 1987, Tetsuo the Iron Man, 1989, Tetsuo 2 Body Hammer from 1992, Tokyo Fist, 1995, Bullet Ballet from 1998, A Snake of June 2002, Vital from 2004, Haze from 2005, Kotoko from 2011, and Killing from 2018. All right, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's 10 movies, two of which are shorter films, but still, that's 10 Tsukamoto titles you get in this box set in blu-ray format now don't go into this thinking that like this is a full filmography from this director because it isn't it's actually quite a bit that is outside of this film uh box set that you know if this is your first foray into Sukumoto's films this is a great start and then if you like some of these then you can move on and there's a lot more uh of other projects that you could check out and just for the record i'm going to list them out here all right, films that are not included are all of his films before 1987, okay? Many of which were short films. Not all of them, though. The only one that I've seen is The Phantom of Regular Size from 1986, which is 18 minutes long. Very similar to Tetsuo. Very similar. It's basically like a, a short, like, prototyped version of Tetsuo. So, uh, and you can't find that on YouTube in its entirety. It is on YouTube. And also, Cinema in the Pond did a review of that film as well. So you can, that's all free for you on YouTube. But it would have been nice if they included it in this box set since it was a, a natural precursor to Tetsuo. And I can't imagine there would be licensing issues for that short film. Maybe there is, I don't know. But So it would have been nice if they included that as well. Hiruko the Goblin from 1991 is not included in this box set. Uh, you know, I... I, I reviewed that in my Asian horror playlist. I actually like it uh, more after repeat viewings. It's a pretty neat movie. Gemini from 1999, which is a big one. That's upper tier Tsukamoto for me, not included. But Mondo Macabre is coming out with a Blu-ray release of it, so you could buy it from them. Tokage, also known as Lizard from 2003. This is a 50-minute film. Uh, I have never seen it. I've looked for it, but I've never been able to find it. So that, you know, would have been nice to include in here. Tamamushi from 2005. It's another short film from Tsukamoto. It was part of the female anthology, which you can get on Region 3 DVD. That anthology is, it's, it's all right. I don't think it's anything special. But again, I've only seen it one time, so it could grow on me. Both Nightmare Detective films are not included in this from 2006 and 2008. Nightmare Detective 2 is a fantastic movie. And the first one I think is good as well, even a little bit underrated. So again, check those out if you ever get a chance, especially the second one, which is really good. Those I think you could get online to rent. Tetsuo the Bullet Man is not included in this, the third film in the Tetsuo trilogy, so to speak. Again, a little bit surprising. That might be a licensing issue. Again, most people consider it to be the weakest of the trilogy, so... You know, but still, would have been nice if it was included. The Whistler, his short film that was a part of the Kaiden Horror Classics project, which were like four horror movie shorts from 2010. And uh, that's actually a pretty big release that someone needs to, to, to release that. 
Someone needs to release that. Because you have Masayuki Ochii, Sang Il Lee, and Hirokazu Koreeda, who were the other directors for that project. Someone needs to release that project uh, with English subtitles. That's a big one that we're missing. And then Fires on the Plane from 2014, which does have a Region 2 English subtitled release. That's also not included. So again, you know, there's a lot of good stuff in here, but there's a lot of good stuff outside of here to check out. So, special features. I'm going to read them right off the back here. There is a bunch of special features on this. I'll skip the technical stuff. All right. We got... Let's see here. Do, 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 subtitles, yada, yada. Audio commentaries by Japanese cinema expert Tom Mess on all 10 movies. You get 10 commentary tracks on this. It includes brand new commentaries. Okay, on Tetsuo, Tetsuo 2, Tokyo Fist, A Snake of June, Kotoko, Killing, and The Adventures of Electric Rod Boy, and Hayes. So I think he did two... There's two on here that are archival, uh, probably Bullet Ballet and Vital, because I think I have those commentaries on my old DVDs. So you get those here, as well as eight new commentaries from Tom Mess. And, uh, you know, he, he wrote for Midnight Eye, that was like his website back in the day, and they stopped doing updates. So he knows his stuff. He knows his stuff, and, well, unless he's talking about contemporary Japanese horror films, then I have a problem. But... He, he knows his stuff for the most part. In fact, he wrote a book already on Shinya Tsukamoto. Iron Man. Okay, the cinema of Shinya Tsukamoto. Written, of course, by Tom Mess. And this book is fantastic. It's, uh, you know, it's got some color pages in it. It's about 200 pages long. And it goes through, you know, it starts in his early years goes through the Phantom of Regular Size and every single film he did through Vital. So that's through 2004. This book covers in detail, you know, the production of the films, the meaning behind the films, you know, uh, the director perspective on everything. It's This book's fantastic. So if you get this box set and you like Tsukamoto and you want to really dig into the meaning of his films and the production, this is a must-buy. I'm not sure how much it's going for nowadays, but you, you need to get this, all right? And some of that, you know, it'll be interesting to see how much of that kind of blends into his uh, commentaries. Although I'm sure his commentaries will have some new stuff. And of course, this would supplement the book because he's got commentaries for the movies that came after Vital in the set. So that's a big, big feature that uh, really kind of impressed me. I like Tom Mess, even though I give him crap about in my, in my uh, Death of J-Horror video. <laughs> I like him. He's good. <clears throat> Next. We got Japanese Cinema's Provocateur Extraordinaire, a brand new career spanning interview with Shinya Sugimoto, An Assault on the Senses, a brand new visual essay on the films and style of Shinya Sugimoto by Japanese cinema expert Jasper Sharp, another Midnight Eye guy. He's excellent as well. Multiple archival interviews with Shinya Sugimoto covering every film in the collection. Shooting a Snake of June, an archival behind-the-scenes featurette on the film's production. Archival Making a Vital featurette. Archival Behind-the-Scenes featurette on Vital's world premiere at the Venice Film Festival. Archival featurette on Vital's special effects. The Making of Hayes, an archival behind-the-scenes featurette on the film's production. Ka Kaori Fuji at the Locarno Film Festival, an archival featurette focusing on Hayes' lead actress. Archival background to the adventures of Denshu Kozo featurette. Tokyo Fist bullet ballet and vital music clips. <clears throat> Multiple trailers and image galleries. Limited edition slipcover, which we're going we're gonna to look at, featuring newly commissioned artwork and reversible sleeves for each disc featuring newly commissioned artwork by a range of artists, a double-sided fold-out poster, illustrated collector's booklet featuring new writing on the films by Kat Ellinger, Jasper Sharp, and Mark Schilling. So this is loaded, okay, with special features, a lot of which, uh, really, we have never seen before, you know? So, this is like big-time release, people. 
Now, let's go through the individual uh, stuff inside of this, okay? Now, I have reviewed most of Tsukamoto's films on my YouTube channel already, either in separate video reviews, um, <clears throat> in my Asian horror playlist, okay, or my DVD collection uh, playlist. Now, this is the hardcover book. Okay, it looks pretty neat. I like the red and black kind of uh, style of this. Now, inside, this book seems to be 56 pages long. It's 56 pages long in here. It looks smaller than that, but it is 56 pages. Now, let's look at the table of context. You got cast and crew, so it's basically credits, okay, for each of the films. And then starting on page 9, I Feel Weird also known as Sex in the Single Drill, Masculinity and Sexuality in Shinya Tsukamoto's Early Cyberpunk Films by Kat Ellinger. That's a 10-page long write-up. Then, You Can't Beat It Away, Love, Loss, and Total Annihilation of the Self in Tokyo Fist and Bullet Ballet, again by Kat Ellinger. That's another 10-page write-up. Now, of course, there's some pictures in here, so it may not be, you know, entirely 10 pages of, of text, but... Next, The Heart Beneath, A Snake of June and Vital by Jasper Sharp. It's another 10-page section. All in the Mind, Haze and Kotoko by Jasper Sharp. Another 10-page section right up. And then, How Can You Kill So Easily? Shinya Tsukamoto's Anti-Samurai Samurai Movie by Mark Schilling, who's a big-time writer. I think he writes for the Japan Times, or at least used to. And that's a 7-page uh, write-up. So this is additional write-ups on Tsukamoto. So you got the commentaries, you can buy the freaking book, and you got this little book here that goes through uh, some stuff as well. So you're going to get a lot of, uh, you know, and it's got colored, it's got some colored illustrations inside and pictures. It's hardcover too, which is pretty impressive. So yes, this is just... Uh, I won't show you everything, but uh, it's Tokyo Fist. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's pretty pretty impressive stuff so far. <clears throat> Good book. All right. Now, uh, the poster I already took out. I'm not going to unwrap it all for you, but it's very similar to the uh, <clears throat> to this artwork, I believe. And then you flip it over, and it's got like the Tetsuo, uh, a Tetsuo artwork as well. <clears throat> All right, so let's go through the individual discs here. We already covered the movie list. We already covered the special features. I'll just talk briefly about each film. So the first discs. All right, and these are reversible sleeve colors. You get Tetsuo, okay, and Tetsuo 2 Body Hammer. I picked the Body Hammer as my... Uh, my slip cover, I kind of flipped it. The Tetsuo one was good, but this looks cooler. <laughs> it looks pretty cool. He's got his mouth hanging out and the, like the weird freaking, you know, goggle, you know, flesh metal goggles type thing. That's pretty sweet. And then this, this disc also includes the Phantom, or I should say the Adventures of Electric Rod Boy. So Tetsuo, all right, let's do real quick thoughts on some of these films, okay? Now, Tetsuo the Iron Man, you have a mild-mannered salary man played by Tamaro Taguchi, all right, and uh, his girlfriend, Kei Fujiwara, they basically run over a psycho, and the psycho has the ability to, I guess, blend flesh and metal. So the psycho comes after the salary man, and that's basically the movie for you. Again, it's like, it's one of the craziest films I've ever seen in my life. <clears throat> you know, it's rate, it's uh, it's only about 60-something minutes long, shot in black and white, and uh, it's it's an experience. It's kind of surprising to me that it's now, like, Tsukamoto's most popular film by far. Like, everybody talks about Tetsuo, but hopefully this box set will shine some light on some of his other films that I think are possibly even better than this uh, and even more interesting. Kind of a relentless assault on the senses, you know, it uses, like, hardcore music in it. It's like, uh, what would you call it, industrial kind of uh, music. Very, it's the, the visuals are 
you know, you get fast forward photography, you get stop motion animations, very nightmarish, you know, very, very representative of a nightmare on film. So Tetsuo is just fantastic, you know, and before Tetsuo, a few years before that, we had the adventures of electric rod boy. <laughs> I just like the name, you know, shot on a, on a shoestring budget like Tetsuo wasn't, you know, this is an even lower budget version, right? <clears throat> but it's not the same story as Tetsuo. It's a completely different story. Uh, it tells the story of a bullied teenager who finds himself transported into a nightmarish future where a group of vampires seek to conquer the world using a machine that creates eternal darkness. A diabolical plan, which he alone can thwart thanks to the large electricity pole, basically like a telephone pole, growing out of his back. So that's just... I'm telling you, like this is the type of stuff you're going to get in this box set. The movie is actually surprisingly entertaining, and it actually has a little bit of a... Uh, here's the inside of these here for you. It has a little bit of a... Uh, I would say a charming vibe to it. It has like more of a... I guess a lighter tone at times than some of other Tsukamoto's films. So yeah, yeah. So you definitely... You could start with The Adventures of Electric Rod Boy, then move to Tetsuo the Iron Man, Okay, and that gives you kind of a similar type of vibe. Those two films have a similar vibe, even though the stories are different. And you get recurring cast members. I mean, you got Tamaro Taguchi in, in those. You know what I'm saying? And uh, some of the same actors as well. Shinya shows up in them and everything. And then you could go online and watch Phantom of Regular Size, and some of the same actors are in that film as well. So he had his own little little pack of low uh, you know, friends, basically, that he was making these movies with early in his career. And then you have... Tetsuo 2 Body Hammer, which I got to say has really grown on me over time. You know, I uh, initially, when I first saw it, it was disappointing. You know, number one, it doesn't have necessarily the same uh, visual uh, consistency because it's in color, but the color is actually used really well. I like the way Body Hammer looks and the plot of it. It's not a sequel. <laughs> the plot is, it's almost like he remade his film three times it, or readapted it really because they're different stories very different stories but you still have that same kind of body horror aesthetic in all three of the uh tetsuo films but i think tetsuo 2 is a good flick man it uh i rewatched it again like a week ago and it's it gets better every time i watch it it's like all sukamoto's films man it's like uh in fact i i almost feel like rewatching it again and i just watched it again a week ago so again the tetsuo films are good and, uh, you know, I'd say if you haven't seen Tetsuo 2 in a while, you know, I would say give it another chance when you buy the set and try to divorce yourself from the first film. You know, try to separate it because they're really two very different films in a lot of ways. Um, but I really like the color in this, too. And it moves at a fast pace. It's not, like, too long or anything. So it's entertaining stuff. All right. Let's go to the next disc here. Now we have Tokyo Fist and Bullet Ballet. Okay, Tokyo Fist and Bullet Ballet. Now again, these films are very different. Again, it's it's Sukumoto. He does a lot of different stuff, but you can always tell it's a Sukumoto film. Now Tokyo Fist for me is like ultra like god tier Sukumoto. Okay, it's in my I would say my top three films from him, if I had to choose, are. Uh, Tokyo Fist, Gemini, and Vital. So you're going to get two out of those three films in this box set. Now, Tokyo Fist, you have an insurance salesman, played by Sukumoto himself. He has a chance encounter with an old friend, played by his actual brother in real life, and uh, who's a professional boxer, kind of an amateur professional type boxer. He was kind of on the lower ranks. And basically... Sukumoto's character's girlfriend gets into this mix, and they basically have... It, it, this is Sukumoto's most thematically complex film, Tokyo Fist, in my opinion. I think it is. There's a lot of stuff going on, not just with its themes, but its characters. You know, I especially like the, uh, the female lead in this film. is just fascinating. And the way she affects both of the men in the film is really good stuff. Really interesting. I love the film's use of color. Again, it has some of the uh, some of the kinetic camera work and energy that you'll see in his other films, but it's wrapped up in kind of a different package. You know, it's really really a fascinating flick. One, definitely one of the best films of the '90s, in my opinion. 
Then you have Bullet Ballet, a TV commercial director played by Sukumoto. His world is rocked when he loses his beloved girlfriend to suicide. In his grief and desire to understand the circumstances of her death, it leads him down a dark and violent path, exploring Tokyo's seedy underworld. You know, he comes face to face with some juvenile delinquents and, uh, and some violence. So, again, this one's shot in black and white as well. Bullet Ballet, very solid film. Some people think it's, it's Tsukamoto's best. You know, it's uh, a lot, you know, if you were to have like a top list of Tsukamoto films, I think a lot of people's lists would be different. Uh, just because he just has a nice variety. And he has so much overall quality. Yeah, Bullet Ballet is sweet. And, uh, yes, so those are those two. Then we go to the next set here. Okay, now at this point in Tsukamoto's career, he kind of, I wouldn't say he completely changed, but he, he started morphing even more so into, like, different aesthetics and different themes and different kinds of movies here, right? So we have A Snake of June and Vital. Again, I've covered these on my channel in separate reviews, both of them. A Snake of June is like... It, calling it an erotic thriller kind of does it a disservice. <laughs> you know, it's, it has those weird type oddities that you'll find in Tsukamoto's other films. But it's almost like a... I would say like almost like a sexual fulfillment movie. But it's also, even though it's like erotic at times, it's also wholesome. At the same time, because your whole the whole film revolves around this marriage between the lead female lead and her husband, and their marriage is kind of on the rocks a little bit. It's a very stifling relationship, you know what I mean? He it's uh, and that type of thing. And she goes through this journey of basically, uh, I would say, sexual discovery, but it doesn't happen like a typical erotic thriller. It's not. That's the thing. Tsukamoto's films are not typical, man. They're just not. Like, even if you know the premise at the beginning of the film, like, even if you think you know the ending, <clears throat> getting there is an adventure. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it throw, he throws a lot of curveballs at you. And the way his films operate are just different. It's just different stuff. This was shot, I think it was shot in black and white and then tinted in, a, in blue, which is. Uh, you know, there are, you, we see a lot of blue tints in movies, but not quite like this. A Snake of June just looks, it just looks phenomenal. It looks phenomenal. You have kind of a water aesthetic, too, because it was shot in the rainy season, I believe, in Japan. And the lead actress, Asuka Kurosawa, is phenomenal. You know, so you have another really good lead female character in this movie. So it's, it's really cool stuff. Snake of June is sweet. And then you have Vital. You see, now, now that I think about it, you know, I say my top three films are Tokyo Fist, Gemini, and Vital, but A Snake of June, like, every time I watch one of his movies, I'm like, well, that, like, that could be one of my favorites, you know what I mean? Then you have Vital, okay, you have Tadanobu Asano. I almost feel like, I don't like talking about the plot of Vital, just because I don't know, you know, how much I should talk about it. You basically have this guy, gets into a car accident, his girlfriend dies. He loses his memory. Okay, he goes to medical school, and he's in his medical dissection class. He's dissecting a human being, and his memories start coming back to him as he's dissecting this human being. Okay, and this is, uh, I know it says Snake of June here, but I'm talking about Vital, of course. This is a romance film that revolves around the, uh, the beauty of biology. How many films can you say that about? You know, the film focuses so much on the beauty of biology. Here's like the, the reverse cover art for Vital. You can see that. So, I mean, the movie's just phenomenal. It's just great. Very like, again, almost very calming at times. It's very like rhythmic and hypnotic. Just very, uh, it's, it's another great film from him. So even though this set is not a complete set, I think they picked... A lot of films, the, their choices were, were pretty good. If you were to limit yourself to like 10 movies, you know, I might swap one out for, for Gemini. But other than that, they, they, I think they did a pretty good job. Then you have Kotoko and Killing. Okay, and I think 
Uh, where is Hayes? I know Hayes is on one of these. Which one is Hayes? Yo, Hayes is also on this disc, just so you know. So Hayes is the one where Sukumoto, it's a 50-minute film. Sukumoto wakes up in like a cramped space, and it's super claustrophobic. All right, Hayes is a super claustrophobic film. A lot of tight shots, uh, quite different for Sukumoto, actually. Very, very like claustrophobic spaces where he's like crawling through crevasses. He's trying to figure out like how he got there and, and how to get out. And it actually becomes a little bit complicated and thought-provoking, especially near the end. So it's uh, Hayes is, again, worth watching. I do feel like... Uh, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a very darkly lit film as well, which I kind of wish it was uh, the lighting was a little better, but that's really kind of like my, my main criticism of it, but it's definitely worth watching. Then we have Kotoko and Killing. Okay. Kotoko is basically about a woman who is completely off her rocker at the beginning of the film, right at the beginning of the film. I mean, she, she engages in self-mutilation. She sees evil doppelgangers of people that aren't there. And she's trying to take care of her, her basically toddler, infant, child, while she's lose, completely losing her mind. You know what I mean? And it's pretty compelling. All right. Another strong female lead uh, performance in this. I think Coco was the actress's name. She's kind of a singer, a songwriter a lot of the time, too. And... Uh, yeah, really, uh, another really interesting film. But again, Sukumoto kind of, he approaches each film a little bit differently. I mean, Kotoko has less of a story to it. It doesn't really have much of a story. It's basically like, uh, I don't know, however long it is, a 90-minute uh, view of what this woman is going through. <laughs> and her just trying to, like, survive her complete just mental fracturing uh, while she's trying to protect her child. So that's basically what the film is. So, it, you know, it's a little bit of a divisive film. I have heard some criticisms of it. Well, most of Tsukamoto's films are going to be divisive just because they're so kind of weird and odd. But, you know, going into Kotoko, expect more of a, less of a narrative film, more of like an experience film where you, you're, you're seeing what this woman's dealing with. And then we got Killing, you know, from 2018. I just watched it a few days ago for the first time since it wasn't really available. It might have been available online or not, I don't know, but... Uh, that's a samurai era film, which is very much a, uh, <clears throat> a companion piece to, I would say, Fires on the Plane. Very much a companion piece to that video, uh, that movie, because, not only because of its themes, you know, it's set in a forest setting a lot of the time, it's a period film, it, uh, you know, uh, definitely you get that summer, hot summer aesthetic to it, and... It was really good. You know, I'm actually going to review it uh, in a few days on my channel. So just look out for my review um, of that film, Killing. And then, you know, I'll probably review Q uh, Kotoko in a separate review as well coming up in the next few weeks since I don't really have one for that. So, yeah. I mean, this is a very solid set. Very solid. And again, you get a nice variety. You know, you get kind of an, an erotic thriller-esque movie. You get a movie about boxing. Very, very high-level descriptions I'm giving. Because uh, when you watch the film, it's going to be unlike anything you've really ever seen before. Even though, uh, even if you label it as a boxing movie or an erotic thriller. You know what I mean? It's a samurai movie that's not really a typical samurai film and killing. You know, stuff like that. So, yeah, it's pretty, pretty impressive, fantastic box set, I must say. And I, I think the selection of films was pretty excellent. A pretty excellent selection. So some brief thoughts on Tsukamoto in general, as I put these, these discs away. You know, I said, you know, this guy is basically my favorite director of all time, okay? And like we've seen, he has a nice variety of films under his belt, you know? But like I said before, you can always tell, you can always tell when Tsukamoto directs a film. You know, like a Dario Argento or like a John Carpenter or something like that, where it doesn't matter what they're directing, you could tell they directed it. And he has a very distinct, like, style. Uh, even though he mixes it up, you could just tell it's him, right? And I think one reason for that is because he serves as director, writer, and editor for almost 
all of his films. I mean, almost all of them. I can't think of any off the top of my head where he wasn't the director, the writer, and the editor on his film. So that, that's probably why all of his films feel like a very specific personal type of uh, project. And a lot of his films don't have big budgets either, so he doesn't have to worry really a lot about studio committees like inflicting uh, you know, problems upon him uh, as much as a typical director would, right? He also acts in many of his films as well, right? And uh, so, yeah, it's, that's probably the reason why a lot of his films have that particular Tsukamoto feel to them. The overall quality of his work has continued to stay at a high level. You know, the, you don't see like a precipitous fall of, his, of the quality of his films. Even his films from the last decade, I would say that are very solid, all three of them. All three of them are solid. I mean, Kotoko, Fires on the Plane, and Killing. Yeah, those are solid flicks. So, you know, that's good. He's maintained a high level of, uh, of execution in his direction and in his films. So that definitely benefits. And then another big thing, and this is big for me, is that he, he doesn't have a lot of fat in his movies. You know what I mean? Even good movies nowadays, or even, you know, older films may have had the same problem too, but just films in general. You know, even when I see a good film, 95% of the time, I say to myself, huh, I could have cut out 5 to 10 minutes out of that film. You know what I mean? I mean you could have cut out 5 out of 10 minutes. You know what I mean? Almost every single time. And bad films, sometimes you're like, somebody should have cut out a half an hour. You know, it's very rare where you have a film that's like either too short or has, like, perfect runtime, at least in my opinion. And uh, Tsukamoto does that. Listen to these runtimes of his films, okay? Some of them uh, included in the box sets, some not included. But I'm not even including his short films in this list. Listen to this. 67 minutes, 89 minutes, 83 minutes, 87, 87, 84, 77, 86, 106, 102, 71, 91, 87, and 80. Now that, that to me is efficiency. That's efficiency. You know what I mean? There's some directors out there nowadays, that, you know, they got their heads so far up their rear end, they can't make a film under two and a half hours. It's like, come on, dude, just cut the fat. Stop, uh, you know what I mean? So he's very uh, efficient in his run times. And I find that that's why they're just so, I don't know, I find his films very easy to chew through, man. And his filmography is easy to chew through because of that. I mean, you could, I mean, you could really marathon. I, I almost, I don't know if I would marathon them. I would, because you got to chew on them, each, into the, each individual film a little bit. Uh, you know, I marathon them now because I've seen them so many times. But, <clears throat> you know, it's easy to hammer through his filmography because his films are so manageable in the run times. He hasn't even sniffed the two-hour mark yet, not even close. So that's kind of big for me. I like that. Again, he makes some weird experimental movies, all right, that are very unique, different in kind of how they tell his stories and what happens in them and stuff like that, the way they look. But he's able to kind of ride that fine line to where he doesn't get obnoxious to me. He doesn't get uh, you know, too full of himself, you know, he, he doesn't do weird things just for the sake of being weird, I always feel like there's, there's something going on, and there's complexity in there, I could, it, his films are thought-provoking, you know what I mean, where, I mean, there's some other directors out there who make weird films, and, you know, very hit or miss, sometimes they make a good one, sometimes you're just like, this is just annoying, you know what I mean, sometimes I just get annoyed, and I like watching weird films on a consistent basis, because, um, I need it as part of my cinematic diet. I gotta watch weird movies, like, basically all of the time. At least peppering them in consistently. So, I mean, Tsukamoto's a director where he can do that. He can make movies where you're like, I've never seen anything quite like this before. But I like it. You know? And I think that's uh, not easy to do. So that's another reason why he's probably number one on my list of favorite directors of all time. But I, again... I can understand why some people may not like his stuff, because it's, it's kind of out there. Some of his stuff is out there, man. Rewatch factor is extremely high for his films because of that. Because they're kind of odd, 
They're very personal, kind of weird. They're complex. They got a lot of stuff going on, you know. And if you don't believe me, you know, I'm sure the commentaries on the movies will will detail some of those complexities for you. A lot of it's in this book, okay. And I do I do, I, I uh, mentioned the same thing about Mike. You know, people who think Mike doesn't have a lot of complexity in his films. You know, read the book uh, Agitator, and you'll I mean you can't deny it. So again, same thing here. There's complexity. So as you watch them again, you pick up more things. You watch it again a third time, you pick up more things, and it's his films just get better with rewatches. And then obviously with all the uh, the commentaries on this, you know, I'm going to be rewatching them for the commentaries as well. And then any the other anything else I want to say? Yeah, that's about it. And you get memorable female characters, which is really nice to see. So this box set's pretty pretty huge. It'll be interesting to see if, you know, how many people actually talk about this box set and the movies within it. You know, Sukumoto, I don't know, it's just something, maybe because I like him so much, I feel like he just doesn't get nearly as much attention that he deserves. Like, you know, people see Tetsuo, that's like the only film that kind of, I mean, I don't hear people talk about Tokyo Fist. I don't hear people talk about Vital. You know what I mean? So... I don't know. It'll be nice to see if he could get some additional attention for this box set. And I think that uh, I already saw a few like YouTube videos and some posts online of people who blind bought the box set without even seeing any of his films because they, you know, they read about it and were really interested in checking this guy's stuff out. So that's a big plus for this box. I mean, it'll turn more people onto his films and, and give the fans some nice extras and, and Blu-ray quality. So I think... That's that's most of my thoughts on this. Again, if you want my thoughts on any of Sukumoto's films, just search my channel, or you know, or search in the Asian horror playlist because a lot of his stuff are are horror films. Although, I will say, you know, Snake of June is not a horror film. Vital isn't a horror film. Kotoko isn't a horror film, and Killing isn't a horror film. So this has a nice mix. You know, Tokyo Fist isn't. Neither is Bullet Ballet. Really, the only horror films are the Tetsuo films. And uh, <clears throat> even Adventures of Electric Rod Boy are, well, it's, it's horror-ish, I would say. So yes, is there anything else to say about this? I don't, I probably forget certain things. I didn't really write a script for this, but, so, uh, it, I apologize for any uh, sluggishness or uh, sloppiness in my thoughts here. But this is big. It's big stuff. Again, Sukumoto, man, I mean, if... There's one Japanese director I'm going to tell you to explore. It's Sukamoto. So this is a good, a good solid set. I really look forward to just freaking chewing through all the commentaries and special features. <clears throat> Again, this is on... I bought mine on Diabolique DVD, and it was like 65 bucks. For, for all of this, it was 65 bucks. Now, I, I know on Amazon, it's... Ooh, it's going to slide out. It, uh, it's going for more than that, so... I would say, you know, if you want to get it and you can, you can splurge now, just pre-order it. So you don't have to worry about the increased prices and maybe the, the booklet not being in future uh, releases. So do it, people. Shinya Sukamoto, the dude's the best. And as always, I'll see you next time.